On December 20th, 1986, there were three young black men who were attacked by a group of white racist teenagers in Howard Beach, which is a predominantly white neighborhood in Queens, New York. Of the three, one outran his attackers, the other was severely beaten, and the third, its name, Michael Griffin, was chased into traffic and died after being hit by a car. The two surviving victims were treated as perpetrators by the police in Queens, and this, of course, sparked racial tension and protests. It is also where, for the first time, we hear the slogan, no justice, no peace. Some five years later, in Los Angeles, the LA riots occurred after four white police officers were acquitted after a video clearly filmed them decided to be being Mr. Bobby King, right? And the world was introduced to the slogan again, no justice, no peace. As the black community stormed the streets of LA in protest, can yeah, remember that date well? I was only an adolescent, but I remember vividly seeing those images on my television, the outrage, the brunt of injustice. Still, four years ago, many of us can remember this, a horrific video of George Floyd's murder at the hands of police in Indianapolis. And again, this incited local and global protests, and through the movement of Black Lives Matter, once again, we saw the slogan, no justice, no peace. What does this have to do with today's wisdom, friends? What does this have to say about Jesus' words? By the way, these are, after all, red letter words. If you know any of that, that means that these are words that come directly from the mouth of Jesus. So it's not some other writer writing it. These are words that are direct from the mouth of Jesus. And surely at first glance, when you read it, it, it kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. In fact, it comes across a bit contradictory, shall we say, to the popular widely held belief that Jesus is peace. He clearly states, don't think I've come to bring peace on earth. I've come to bring, not to bring peace, but a sword, is what he said. And so Jesus had come to disrupt things, to agitate things, to somehow sort of like a sword cut through things, divide them, and separate them. In this case, even within the most nearest and most nearest of things to us, our family. Earlier in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus said these words, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be children of God. We advocate for nonviolence, and even in the passion narrative where the disciple Peter uses his sword to cut the ear of the Roman soldier, all the defense of Jesus, still, he does not approve. So, what is Jesus referring to? Certainly, Jesus is not advocating for family division, nor is he encouraging violence or hate. Instead, this is what I believe Jesus is pointing that there is inevitable effects of his justice-oriented mission upon others. Upon those who will oppose not only Jesus' mission on the world, but also his disciples who will carry on his mission towards the future. Because, honestly, following Jesus is inherently following the justice. And therefore, without justice, there can be no peace with the corrupted, with the rich and powerful, with the oppressor, the colonizer, nor with the imperialistic empire. Did you hear? By the way, Jesus' words are true. For many early church apostles and prophets were put to death for their allegiance to Jesus' mission or mission. Think of our most recent prophets. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Tim Khan, Cesar Chavez, as to mention a few. The point of this wisdom, my friends, I believe, is that this mission, this work, is simply to communicate to Jesus' followers, you must endure the opposition 
that will come from every side, even your family side. This is a making a reality for the authors. This is what can make you happen to the agitators and the prophets who tell the truth, who point out the injustice in this world. I wonder, have you had this experience with your family and son? Perhaps a parent, an in law, an uncle, a cousin, a sibling, an old friend. Concerning one's world perspective matters in today's America. For some are more concerned with the order of things than the justice of things. More concerned with self-preservation than world preservation. It's interesting, Dr. King once uh, added a commemoration of the 100th birthday of W.E.B. Du Bois. said that Dr. Du Bois' greatest virtue was his committed empathy with all the oppressed and his divine dissatisfaction with all forms of injustice. I believe this is what Jesus' mission is proclaiming. A dissatisfaction with injustice. And listen, I'm not sure if we're dissatisfied with injustice. James Cone, the Black Liberation Theologian, says it this way in the words of Malcolm X Don't let anybody who is oppressing us ever lay the brown rules. Don't go by the games, don't play the game by the rules. Let them know that this is a new day and we got some new rules. I'm not sure if we're any people know that this is a new day with new rules. But see, the call, the aim, the intention of Jesus' oriented mission is to be uncomfortable, for us to speak up against injustice, shall we say, to agitate, to disrupt the system, to boldly stand with the poor and the oppressed, with the mistreated. So how can there be peace when injustice is happening right in front of us? There cannot be any rest until everyone is free, until everyone is included, until the current and arrangement of this whole thing is just, equitable, fair, and inclusive for all people. No justice, no peace, no rest. And if this only you are being mistreated or abused, no justice, no peace. If you have come to this place searching for answers, about to give up on your dream, no justice, no peace, no rest. Because we all need social liberation in one way or another. When will we see the social liberation, friends? When we will see the joy of justice, when will justice roll down like water, it's like a river, as the prophet Amos said? When will we see such joy in our streets and our neighborhoods, in flowing all over our inner cities and urban centers? When, or oh when, or oh when, oh God, will we see that? See, I truly believe that this will happen when our queer trans siblings are fully accepted and celebrated. Not treated as second class citizens of the kingdom of God. And when Christians stop weaponizing the Bible of church Christianity or the name of Jesus to justify exclusion and hate, rather, joy will come when all of these precious and beautiful souls are treated as wonderfully made, made in the image of the divine, whole, complete, loved, then shall we see such. And when our black and brown and indigenous communities are given their proper and deserving space and place at the table of power and influence, when they're given positions of leadership and offer signs of reconciliation and healing, and when the church finally stands in solidarity with people of color and repudiates all races, all white supremacists, theologies, doctrines, and beliefs, then joy will come in the streets. Social liberation shall come. When women who heads are we given the equal footing in a church fully affirms and lead to preach, to pastor, faith with faith communities, and when our American society truly trusts women with the decisions of their own bodies, then your children ring in the streets. 
social integration will come. And with immigrants and migrants and travelers, we see us a warm welcome, a smile, rather than uh, an incomplete wire or a militarized zone with an opportunity and respect and hospitality and love. Then Jesus will come and will roll down like a river. And with the poor and the powerless are treated with honor and decency and grace in our streets and our food banks and our inner cities, giving them adequate housing and, 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 and education for their children, grocery stores that they get into consideration when, when identification arrives to the serving centers and when they are fed at city council meetings and when abundance is shared with the poor and social liberation at the time. And when the working class can pay fairly, equity, able to afford the basic human things in this world, like health care, housing, food, and the treatment, respect, and honor for their back breaking, careless work that most people are hoping to reject, and when they're fighting and providing for their families, joy will fill our neighborhoods and social liberation shall And when our plan is made a priority care for, Protected, and when we start taking it serious, we stop using plastics, minimize our footprint, become mindful of our day to day consumption, then joy will bring to all the corners of this universe and liberation will come. Oh, the beauty, the loveliness of justice, of social liberation. It is happening and it is. Fullness is coming. The entire universe is being healed, it is being repaired and reconciled. Do not ever forget that. How can you see it in this world? Can you see how this new world is playing by a new set of rules? I sure hope so. Because this is the reality of our universe. It is coming, it is swinging, it is hurrying, shall we say, moving to a rhythmic melody. Singing over us, singing with us. Some scientists believe the universe is growing and expanding in its very moment for hundreds of years. So it fits so well with this narrative that things are moving, that things are evolving, we are expanding, being made new, the entire universe being put back together. And this is so exciting to believe in it, to follow it. But friends, some, some rather keep things as they are. In fact, for some, it is not about moving forward and embracing, embracing the newness of the divine. Instead, they seek to go backwards. To what once was, where everything was homogenized, where diversity and inclusion could be suppressed by the boots of empire, where religion, Bible, scriptures, and religious practices could be used to ignore, to exclude, and to judge others, and to mistreat our friends. You see, my siblings, my beloved, these are my friends, these are my friends, how we want to see. It is time for us to recognize that many are living very afraid, that many live with a spirit of fear, but then we are not very excited to hear that there might be a woman president or a woman president of the world. Fear abounds. And I firmly believe that all that Jesus is trying to say in this passage is that we should be aware of that position. That there will be people who oppose justice, people who oppose social liberation. There are people who will be resisting. Right? The advancement and movement of this newness. That there are people who resist at all costs to not treat people fairly. That they will oppose treating others with love and respect and dignity. But there's a reason for all this. And that reason is quite familiar. It's the benefit that comes with it. For many are benefiting from this system today. Profiting 
many are at gain advantages because of today's system, this institutional system in our world. And so it's not easy to let go, it's not easy to follow what they say that they do when you are gaining something from it. And so when I look at the world today, I'm reminded that this fear, that this opposition, that this benefit must be done. That it must be named, addressed, and confronted. That somehow the call for us is not just simply a tip here so half a on a Sunday morning and listen to another sermon. But that the actual call, the actual cross that is needed to carry, that we are as to carry in this passage, is to oppose the oppressor, to stand up to the paralyzer, to speak out against the tyrants and the bullying, that wherever you see injustice, you follow out. That. that is the call that it's, it's, it's always, yes, we're not called to be peacemakers in that sense. They were called to be agitators to disrupt the system that is hurting many people. And I understand it takes boldness, it takes courage, it takes a whole new way of thinking about things. But when we must do it, we must stand the opposition. Because until justice comes and it's fullness, until we can see justice flowing and rolling down like a river, like this non-stop river in our world. Until that day, no justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. Can you say it? No justice, no peace. One more time. No justice, no peace. We're a God and we're a bride. We all say it again. Thanks to you.